Welcome back. We have Cynthia Snyder, Infection Prevention Medical Director at Cone Health. So let's talk about RSV now. Okay, so there's been a lot in the news about RSV, but for people that may not be familiar with it, let's just kind of talk about the 101s. What is RSV? So RSV stands for respiratory syncytial virus, and generally we see it most likely in young kids, like under two. and and now we're seeing more cases in adults. And last year was particularly unique because we had this huge, like immense um, overflow of cases. I, it got to the point where there were not enough ICU or pediatric beds. Um, kids had to be like life flighted to other hospitals. And this kind of happened nationwide. A part of it is that a small, this cohort of kids that were born during pandemic were not exposed to it like they would normally in daycares. However, we're still in that window a little bit. And so with that, um, I'm really applauding the manufacturers of the vaccines and the monoclonal antibodies that there are new tools in our toolbox to help minimize the severity of illness. So in kids, it can cause um, bronchiolitis or a viral pneumonia, as well as in adults. So this year, there's been approval for the RSV vaccine for people who are 60 years old and older. And um, there's a different, there's a vaccine for pregnant women. So if they're pregnant and you're between the gestation age of 32 to 36 weeks in your pregnancy, you can get the vaccine and your body produces the antibodies and it's able to cross the placenta and give antibodies to your um, baby. And so, um, and there's also a new um, monoclonal antibody for, for in infants. So there's a lot of new, um, I think, interventions that can be done to help minimize the risk of getting severe RSV uh, mm -hmm. this winter. Mm -hmm. And then from spreading it too to the grandparents or things of that nature, knowing that there's an adult vaccine that's out. So Dr. Snyder, what can parents and caregivers do to protect their kids from RSV? So and I think the key thing is really good uh, respiratory hygiene, you know, um, making sure if kids are sick, they're not going to school and then um, ensuring that if they're learning how to cover their cough appropriately, masking. Um, so I think all those things that we've done in the past couple of years can still be implemented. But I think the key thing is that, um, I, I wanna say that it, I think there's that temptation to go to work or go to school when you're having some symptoms and that definitely needs to be addressed, um, be it testing for COVID or knowing that you're sick enough that you shouldn't be going to school and infecting others. Mm -hmm. Is there a point where they know that they're sick enough or they should know that they're sick enough to not go to school? I know, I think a lot of the schools and workplaces probably still have that same screening tool that they've used for COVID. So I think respiratory symptoms is like a hard stop okay. until you find out what's going on. Gotcha. Okay, let's talk flu season because flu shot season is here as well. I keep getting things uh, texted to me from different providers saying, hey, come get your flu shot. So who needs to get the flu shot? That is right. You know, the flu shot, I'm a big fan of saying everybody. So if you're older than uh, six months, um, this is a great time to get the flu shot. Specifically, um, definitely for adults as well. You know, we see that the vaccine is so effective that it reduces hospitalizations by 50%. And that is known from previous flu vaccines, but in particular, the recent formulation, when they look at the data from the Southern Hemisphere, it's well matched, which is great. And secondly, it reduces hospitalizations and severity of illness. And so I think all those are bonuses for why somebody should get the vaccine. And, you know, some questions that I get from my patients includes like, should I wait? Should I wait until like December or January? But last year, you know, the flu season came early. And so I don't think enough people had the vaccine on board to prevent prevent um, infection or severity of illness. So I am a big proponent of saying, get your flu vaccine now, like over these next two months is a great time to get those vaccines. Okay, and we have just a little less than a minute. If you're getting the COVID booster and the RSV vaccine or the flu shot, should you space these things out? Um, it is safe to get those vaccines together. 
Um, some people would like to space them out because you might have like less side effects. So um, if you can space it out, that's fine, but I would rather have you guys get them under your belt as quickly as you can. Okay, thank you so much for your time and your expertise. We so appreciate that.